What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to securely encrypt SQLite 3 or SQLite 3 databases so let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn how to encrypt SQLite 3 databases in this video today. Now, regarding the pronunciation, I know a lot of people like to call it SQLite 3. I think both is fine. I'm just going to stick with SQLite 3 because that's how I pronounce it. I'm sure there is a technically correct pronunciation. If you do the research, I'm just going to go with SQLite 3. You can feel free to pronounce it however you like. Now, why would we want to encrypt a database in the first place? Obviously, because there is some sensitive information in it, maybe some passwords, maybe hashes of passwords, uh, maybe some company information, some valuable information that we don't want our competitors to get, something that you want to keep to yourself, something that you want to keep secret. And in SQLite 3, the database is essentially just a file. So we have a simple file. If we lose that file, if someone else gets that file, they can just open it up with the SQLite 3 command line tool and they can see all the information that's in the database, all the entries, all the structure, all the rows, everything without having to enter a password. And the tricky thing now is that the SQLite 3 tool does not allow for encryption out of the box. So the vanilla tool does not allow us to just encrypt the database. We cannot just open the, da uh, the database and enter a password and say, okay, now you can only enter it with a password. For this, we would have to install or we have to install a third party application, an additional tool that allows us to encrypt the database and that then also allows us to use the encrypted database. And this is what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to learn how to do that. And we're going to do all of this on a Linux system. Now I am using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So the Ubuntu system on Windows, uh, you can do that on native Linux. You can also use the WSL. It's just simpler to do it on Linux because I'm sure it also works on Windows, but the installation is a little bit more complicated. Uh, on Linux, we can just use the repositories, the package manager and install everything we need without any problems. Now, if you need help to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, I do have a video on this channel where I show you how to do that. So you can watch that. Otherwise, I'm just going to assume that you have this running either natively or you already have a Windows subsystem for Linux running. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install the vanilla SQLite 3 because what I want to show you here is first of all, how to take something um, usually what you will do is you will not start a new database. You already have maybe a database, an SQLite 3 database, for example, full of data, and you want to take this database and turn it into an encrypted database. Now, the third party tool that we're going to use is not able to just open the database and encrypt it. We need to actually, um, we, we cannot just get an existing database and encrypt it. We have to create a new one and we have to copy the data. We have to transfer the data from an existing one to the new one. So we're going to just install here sudo apt install on Ubuntu at least SQLite 3, the basic tool. In my case, I already uh, have this installed. So you can see already the newest version. So I can just go ahead and say SQLite 3 and then the name of the file. So for example, mydb.db. And now I'm having this uh, basic SQLite uh, command line tool. And here I can do some basic commands. Uh, for example, I can say create table people and I can say I want to have an ID, which is an integer, I want to have a name, which is a text. And I want to have an H, which is also an integer, just a basic uh, table here. And then I want to insert some values. So insert into people, then ID name H, I want to insert the values one, Mike, 30, then maybe um, two. Oh, now I pressed enter. I hope that's not a problem. Uh, two, Sarah, 40, and then maybe three, Bob, and 70. I hope that works. There you go. And now I can say select from, select everything from people. And then we can see we have these entries. Now, of course, here we have a line break now it doesn't really matter, but we have some data in the database. Now you can imagine a more complex database structure, we can leave the tool by just pressing uh, or by just typing dot uh, Q, then we leave the tool. Now I can open it up again, SQLite three, my DB dot DB, select everything from people. And this is the danger or not necessarily danger, but this is what you have. This is the situation that you have when you have an SQLite 3 database, you have this database, you have the important information in it. And everyone who gets the file can just open up SQLite 3, 
uh, and, and the file can just type SQLite 3 in the file into the command line and they can see all the information. And there's no mechanism here to just encrypt this database. So what we actually need to do is we need to install an additional tool. And by the way, we can also see the content here with hex dump. So I can just say hex dump um, dash C and then my DB DB. And we can see here even in the binary um, representation here, even in hex uh, in the in the raw uh, representation of this database, we can see here Bob, Sarah, Mike, we can see a lot of information just by looking at the bytes of this file. So I don't even need the command line tool. And we don't want to have this, of course. So what we're going to install here is an additional tool, I'm going to say sudo apt install SQL cipher. And in my case, again, I already have this tool installed. But this tool is going to allow us to basically do the same thing that we can do or all the same things that we can do with SQLite 3. But we're also going to be able to use encryption. So um, first of all, what we want to do is want to get the existing database that we already have, and we want to export uh, everything. We want to export the creation script or we want to generate a creation script so that we can reproduce everything. We want to have all the tables, all the connections, all the entries. And how we do that is we open up the database with uh, the basic SQLite 3 tool. So mydbdb. And here what I do now is I say dot out to specify that whatever comes next is going to be uh, written into a file. So dot out, I'm going to call this create underscore script dot SQL. And then I'm going to just say dot dump and dot dump essentially creates or generates a create script and an insert script for all the stuff that is in the database. So I can type dot Q here, I can now cat so I can show the create script SQL. And you can see here, uh, foreign keys off begin transaction, create table insert into and then commit. So you can also see here the line break with Sarah. Um, but yeah, you can see this is the script that we would need to reproduce the database to basically create the same database. So we're going to use that script now in SQL cipher to create an encrypted version of that database. So we can go ahead and say SQL cipher. And I will create now a new database, I'm going to call it enc.db, so encrypted.db. And the first thing we want to enter here now is a pragma statement. So we want to say pragma key equals and then some password. This is going to be the password that we're going to use for encryption uh, or for decryption also. So we're going to call this now password, for example, you can call it one, two, three. Of course, if you use this on an actual database that's important to you, use a secure password. I also have a video on this channel on how to choose a secure password. I think I have it on the channel if I didn't remove it. Um, so I set this key here and then uh, what I do is I basically just read in the SQL statement. So I just say read, um, so dot read to read then in SQL file, create script SQL, and then dot Q to basically break out or to basically quit. Um, and then if I load this again, so first of all, if I use just SQLite 3 to open up EncDB, and then I say, for example, here, select everything from people, we can see here, it says file is not a database. That's good, because now it's not usable, I can also call a hex dump dash C onto the encrypted database. And you can see there's nothing that we can understand here. This is just byte, right? So nothing, nothing that shows any information. But if I now go ahead and I say SQL cipher, enc dot db, and if I now go select everything from people, I'm still not going to get anything. So file is encrypted or it's not a database. But if I now say pragma key equals password like this, and then I repeat the statement. Now you can see I have the data. So the database is now encrypted, I can decrypt it using the same password. Uh, and that is how that works. Now, what you can also do is I'm going to now repeat this here, I can say SQL cipher enc 2 DB, I'm going to show you a different way to copy the information. Uh, what we can do here is we can say pragma key equals password again. And now instead of loading an SQL script, we can also just attach the other database. So we can say attach database, data base, uh, what was the name mydb.db? I think that was correct as mydb, for example. So now the database file is attached as mydb, we have this variable. And now I can just go and say create table people ID int 
um, name text h int. I can do it like that. And then I can say insert into people select everything from my DB. And I can also specify, for example, where ID is not two, for example, uh, no such table my DB. Oh, my DB dot people. So now if I go and say select everything from people, you will see that Mike and Bob are in the database, Sarah is not so I can also do it like that, if I want to. But at the end of the day, it's going to be encrypted. That's what's important here. So I can just use SQL cipher to encrypt um, to encrypt this database now. And the next thing we need to look at, let me just open this up here on my second screen, because I have some prepared code here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to automate this in Python. So what would be the wrong way to do it? Let me just open up here with NeoVim, uh, a new Python file, I'm going to call this wrong py. We can just use the core Python module SQLite three. And we can say here the connection is equal to SQLite three dot connect. And um, the one that works is the mighty BDB. So I can just say here cursor equals connection dot cursor. And then cursor dot execute. Select everything from people. Print cursor fetch all to get all the rows. And then I can commit the connection even though I don't know if that's necessary, since we don't change anything, we close the cursor, we close the connection. Uh, and that's basically how this works, right? So I can go ahead now I can say Python three wrong py, this works for the unencrypted database. Of course, it's not going to work now for the encrypted database. So if I go ahead and I say encrypted DB, this is not going to work, you can see file is not a database. So what we need to do here is also we need to install um, the Python module. So first of all, on Linux, we need to say sudo apt install lip SQL cipher dash def. So this is something that we need to install on the system in my case already installed. And in addition to that, we also need to install for pip. So pip three install pi SQL cipher three. There you go. Um, and now what we need to do here, I'm going to um, basically copy the wrong py file to correct py going to open up correct py. Um, now we're going to replace SQLite three here by saying um, from pi SQL cipher three, we're going to import DB API two as SQLite. Now the alias is option uh, optional, you don't need to do that. But now we can just replace SQLite three here by SQLite, the rest stays the same. And of course, one thing that we need to do first is we need to say or actually, let me show you that this doesn't work right out of the box. You can see here, file is encrypted or not a database. But if I now add an additional execute statement here, where I say, pragma key equals password, like that then you can see that I actually get the content of the database. So this is how you can also use this encrypted database in Python with that module. And of course, this makes sense. You don't want to have, of course, the password here in clear text, you either, either want to have it as a user input, or you want to have it in the environment, or you want to have it somewhere, but not just in the code clear text. Um, but this is how you would do that, right? So you would just encrypt the database, you would copy the existing database code, you would generate this uh, create statement script, you would load it into the new encrypted uh, database, you would encrypt the database, and then you would have to decrypt it every time in order to use it. But now if someone else gets this file, as I already showed you, if someone else gets this file, they can do nothing with it, they cannot open it with any tool. Uh, NkDB. They cannot open it with hex dump. they cannot see any information here, they cannot open it with SQLite three, they cannot even open it with SQL cipher if they don't have the key. So if you lose the file, if someone gets the file, that's not too much of a problem uh, compared to a basically uh, a basic unencrypted database file. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 